G'day. You're in the thick of it now. Level three of the beginner donut series. Um, we're not actually going to be doing anything with the donut in this this level. Um, instead, we're going to be making something new, which is a coffee cup, which is in level three going to be put into a scene with our donut for a final render. But I mean, the whole point of this coffee cup is that it's like it's a little bit more precise and it's like hard surface and because a donut's a little loosey goosey and I want to give you like. The, the tools and the techniques that you can apply to something in the future. So this will allow us to like, yeah, talk about extrusion and like modeling things to reference photos, etc. So, um, yeah, we're going to have some fun. Um, and yes, I got a beard. Not sure if you noticed. First time I've ever had a beard. But uh, yeah, I was in Korea and Japan for like a couple of weeks. And uh, when I came home, I'm by myself and I thought, why not just be lazy and not shave. And then <laughs> it started out as laziness. And then I'm like, yeah, let's see where this train goes. Let's see, let's see how it looks. I've never had a beard before, but I don't know. What do you think? Should I keep it? Should I become like, uh, like Tom Hanks and Castaway? I don't know. Um, let me know. <laughs> All right, so um, let's start by adding in a reference photo of a coffee cup. So we're going to be using this image. So the link for this is in the description. Um, and to add in any object into Blender, it is, of course, Shift A. And let me, first of all, make sure my screencast tools is turned on. That's my my goal for this level three. Everyone told me in the comments, make sure you're like the, the, the key press tool is turned on because you keep forgetting it. I'm like, yes. Tell me about it. Anyway, shift A, <laughs> uh, an image, the one you're looking for is uh, is reference. Background will add it into like part of the viewport or something. Reference will actually make it its own separate object, which is, uh, which is what we want. So reference. Okay, and by the way, I'm using Blender 2.81 beta version, which is why this is now like it file browses its own pop-up window now. So it's actually really good, but Anyway, that's why mine's probably different to yours. Anyway, select the image, and uh, the one thing before you add it in is just at the top there, you'll see a checkbox that says align to view. Um, yours, by the way, could be anywhere. It could be on the left-hand side or whatever, but find that checkbox and uncheck it, and then hit load reference image. Ta-da! Okay, so uh, we're gonna be, we're modeling it off this reference, okay? So um, it's important that this actually matches the axes, like it's essentially like number pad one, I want the image to be facing this direction, like front on to the front, okay? So looking at it here, um, because this is a physical object that you can grab and move like any other object, um, I can rotate it. So I'm gonna hit R, uh, and then X after that to rotate just on the X axis. And then you see in the very top left-hand corner, you've actually got the, um, yeah, the rotation amount. So I want that to be exactly 90 degrees, which I can get by holding down control, and that will snap to five degree increments. Um, by the way, side tip, you can also just type in the number 90, <laughs> and that will also do it as well. Um, but uh, anyways, there you go. Okay, so it's rotated face the front, which is nice. And then I'm gonna scale this down, which of course you do with S. So S, and then click and drag this down. So I want this size of my coffee cup to be, I mean, basically just in relation to the donut. Like how big is a coffee cup? Like which is bigger, a donut, like the diameter of a donut or the rim of a coffee cup? Well, uh, the first, like the donut that I, I filmed and I showed you in the previous videos, that's like the first time I've actually held a donut since I was a child. And I was actually surprised at how small donuts are. I'm like, I, I thought these were a lot bigger. I'm not sure if I got bigger or the donuts got smaller or a little column A, a little column B. The point is, is I think actually a, a coffee cup rim, especially like a coffee cup like this, um, I think it's a lot wider than a, uh, than a donut. So probably something uh, eh, like that, yeah? How does that look? In relation to the donut, that looks about right? It'll do, that'll be fine. <laughs> so now, say goodbye to the donut, temporarily. Um, with the donut collection there, I'm just gonna uncheck that box, which will hide it from the render and the viewport so that we can just focus on the coffee cup for the rest of the series. Okay, lovely. So let's move this up until just like the bottom of the plate is touching the bottom of the, uh, the plane here, okay? All right, now we want to add in an object which is going to become our coffee cup. So shift A to add in any new object, mesh, and of course you wanna select the object which most resembles what it is you want to model. And in this case, of course, that's a cylinder. Ta-da! So the cylinder, 
right out of the gate, way too big. So let's dial back the radius to be something smaller and the depth as well, just to be something. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna scale it to match soon. The main value, excuse me, the main value is the vertices. Um, you just want that to be 32 um, because that just happens. I mean, the default just happens to be almost the exact amount you need. So 32 it is. All right, now that we've got that, I am going to, uh, in front view mode, I'm just gonna move this up, this cylinder up until the very top of it is just touching the top of the reference photo, right? Where the, the, the rim is on the reference photo, okay? And then by the way, make sure let's, let's get this actually like right in the center of the uh, reference image there, like that, okay? And then um, I wanna scale this to make it thicker, but you'll see if I scale it, then I gotta like resize the top of it and like move it around again. But if I scale it on everything but the Z axis, which you can do by hitting Shift Z after scaling, um, you can see it's now moving it on the X and the Y, but not the Z axis, which is exactly what we want. Um, now you'll see that it's actually covering the reference photo, which isn't good. So if you hold down Z, by the way, Shortcuts, of, of course, as I've said a hundred times, get my PDF. You won't have to memorize all these hotkeys. It's all, I put time and effort into that PDF so that you don't have to memorize all this. The link for that is in the description. Anyway, Z will bring up this pie menu of all the options. We're looking for wireframe. So that makes it invisible. And uh, now I'm just gonna position this so that it is about there. Let's scale along everything but the Z axis, make it a little bit thicker. I'm just making sure that aligns up and that lines up along the top there. Okay, cool, so we've got the top pretty well done and it's the right thickness. Now let's start shaping out the coffee cup. So this bottom here uh, in edit mode, so uh, tab to go into edit mode or just at the top there, edit mode. And then I'm going to uh, select the bottom vertices which you can drag over like that or hold down alt and left click which is the way I recommend because we're gonna do this a lot through this, uh, this, this series. So alt, left click, we'll select any edge loop. Um, and Siri thought I was saying something. Nope, thank you, useless. I swear, like 99 times out of 100, Siri thinks you say something and you didn't, right? I even just said Siri then and she doesn't even recognize it, but apparently something to do with vertices and that's, that's what triggers it. Anyway, so select that and I'm gonna scale that in with S, scale in. And you know, this photo, this reference photo isn't perfect but no reference photo ever is. Um, it would be great if this reference photo was like with a camera with a long lens far back so that it was like flat on, but it's not. You've got a little bit of perspective. So you've got like, you know, the top of the rim there, but then you've also got like, you can see the opening of this plate there. Point is, is it's hard to actually see where the bottom of this coffee cup actually stops because it's hidden and whatever. So anyway, I think somewhere about there will be fine. Um, yeah, roughly like that. Now let's start adding in more edge loops, which you can do with control R. Um, and you'll remember we did this, I think with the icing stage. So the first, like the yellow line is like a temporary line asking you, where do you want to put this detail? So that's where we want it. So click. And then the second, uh, question it's asking you is where do you want to place this? So it's sliding it along there. Um, so, uh, I actually want to place these in line with like where the handles the top bottom of each of the handle in points, out points, right? Because when we actually model the handle, we're gonna use detail from the, the this, what we're doing now to actually add it in. So anyways, I just wanna add one in like right there. So click and then I'm gonna scale. And I'm just gonna scale it until it matches the reference photo. Pretty simple. And then I do it again, control R, click, move it up to be just the top of this handle here, scale out. Let's do it again, control R, click, and down here, all right, this is very simple. <laughs> and then one more just for the top of this handle here, scale it out very slightly like so. And then as you know, one more right down the bottom there as well, because I think that like towards the bottom of the coffee cup, like it really tapers in. And so I want it to look like nice and smooth down there. Okay, why uh, solid view mode. And that's how it looks, pretty good. Um, now, biggest obvious thing is uh, it's got a face at the top there, and so we want it to be an opening. So in edit mode, I'm gonna select this top ring here with holding down Alt and select, and then I'm gonna hit X, and I'm just gonna remove that face. So X is delete, by the way. Delete face, there we go. Okay, cool, so all is well and good, um, but we need to give it some thickness. Now, can you remember the modifier that will give your coffee cup thickness. If you can remember it, do it now. I don't know, I'm 
be like a teacher, right, at school, like question, trying to force the students to learn things. She's doing her best, you know, but nobody wants to learn. They just want the answers. The answer is the solidify modifier, that one. We did it for the icing, you'll remember. But anyway, it just adds thickness to any any face, essentially. So anyway, um, now this thickness amount here is obviously important. That's the thickness of the glass. Um, and it's really fiddly, this, right? Like it's, I'm holding down shift, which is how you move things on like even smaller increments than default, but it's still really fiddly. So it's actually easier if I just like type in like two millimeters, um, that's easier for me. But, and if you're using the imperial measurements, you can type in like, what would it be? Like <laughs> one, th one, one eighth of an inch or I don't know whatever measurement you would do. Uh, but anyway, two millimeters, that's the one I'm going to, I mean, just basically in reference to like the scale of the coffee cup, you want it to be about that thick. So anyway, um, that's pretty good. Now, if we right click and we go shade smooth, you'll see that it looks like a coffee cup, but a couple of problems. Um, this top lip here, you've got some weird shading and then also you've got some jagged edges along here. Both problems can be fixed by giving it more geometry to work with. And that introduces the most common modifier of all. Can you remember what that one is? That is of course the subdivision surface modifier, which adds, basically smooths out detail, adds in detail and makes things look round and supple and how it's supposed to be in the world. So yeah, subdivision surface. Um, and remember these amounts here, the render amount, like if you change this, nothing will change in the viewport because that's the render amount, only visible when you render. Viewport will actually change how it appears right here. So um, I'm gonna go with two for both of those. I don't really know what quality does. I Quality is like a new, I'm old school. Blender didn't used to have a quality option and now it does and don't care for it. I don't like it. I'm not going to touch it. So <laughs> anyways, um, now the, uh, this, this top of the, uh, the cup here, you'll see like, it's a little smooth, right? It's, I mean, not like you could like cut your lip on it, but it's a little like thin at the top there. And most rims of, especially like glass, it's actually thicker at the top. And the reason this is happening is that if you look in edit mode, you've got like, it's going from there to there. Like it's like, it's trying to do that operation. It's averaging out those amounts from that distance. So anyway, point is we need to add in control R, another loop cut, right at the top there, just to give like some firmness to that uh, that rim there. Okay, pretty good. And then the other thing I'm gonna do, let's just quickly hide the plane here so we can get underneath it. Um, and I'll hide that as well. You can see we get this ugly, like tapered star looking bottom, just looks horrible. The reason it's happening is that you've got actual geometry going into like one giant face and it doesn't know, like it's just physically impossible for it to like try to convert all, like what would that be? Yeah, 32 faces into one face and it's just like things are going haywire. So a very quick fix for, fix for this is to just hide it into a smaller shape, which you can do by hitting I, which is kind of like adding in a loop cut almost like into itself. And when you do that, it has that look. And you can see it, it's smaller now, it's still visible. So you can do it again and that'll like make it disappear almost entirely. So uh, there you go. <laughs> and that is the, uh, that's the coffee cup really. Actually, in fact, not that I just thought about this, but like, you know, in the reference photo, bringing that back. Um, yeah, it looks like it's like really smooth, right? Um, really smooth, but of course, it would have to have like a firm bottom to it because you would be able to like put it on something, right? So I don't know, I just realized like it would probably make sense for us to have like a bit of a hard, uh, hard flat surface. So I'm just gonna like scale this out a little bit and make that a little bit something like that. There you go. That's like a hard, hard little bottom to it. Something, I don't know. That's pretty good. All right, so um, we've made we've made headway. We've 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 talked for fifteen minutes and we've modeled the start of our coffee cup. So in the next video, which you can click there to watch, we're going to be adding in the handles of our coffee cup. So I will see you in the next video.